Good evening, everybody. Professor Ayori Day, once again, welcoming you to another session of Organic Chemistry Review. For today's session, we are going to review Chapter 17, End of Problem uh, Questions, End of Chapter Questions in Chapter 17 of OWL, uh, which is right in front of you. Let me see. Emma, can you go ahead and read this question for us? Okay, uh, Emma is Give a yeah. pack names for the following compounds. Okay. Very good. Uh, give IUPAC names for the following compounds. Okay, these are the two compounds they want you to give the IUPAC names. This here. Okay. If taking a look at this molecule here, how many carbon atoms in this uh, cyclic ring right here? If you if you see this molecule, how many carbon atoms in the ring? Can you uh, uh, pick up the mic? Okay, six. Very good. So everybody says six. Okay, so that would be uh, there for cyclohexanol because you have the hydroxy group is attached to the uh, six-member ring molecule. Okay, and also right here you have a metric group attached to this carbon right here, okay, which has a one three relationship to the to the hydroxy group. Okay? On the other hand, with this molecule here, if you take a look at this molecule here, how many carbon atoms do you have in this ring system? Five. Okay, everybody say five. By the way, Eric, you are welcome. I notice you have joined us. Okay, so this is five. So what I want to do now, I'm going to take these molecules and paste them into my uh, workbook so we can do these problems together. Okay, so just give me one second. Okay, so this is the problem we we have here. Okay, so I am going to draw this molecule here. We have cyclohexane ring system right here. So we are going to draw that first. What they want us to do here is to write the IUPAC name. Does anybody know what the IUPAC name of this molecule will be? We have here hydroxy group. I'm sorry, hydroxy group coming to us. Okay, does anybody know what this will be? Okay, you have the hydroxy group here, which is coming at you, and that is what we have drawn here. And then you also have this metal group is also coming at you. Okay, so we are going to draw this. Okay, both of them coming at us. So we have the methyl and the hydroxy group coming at you. Okay, what would be the name of this compound? Anybody has an idea what the name of this compound would be? The IUPAC name? Okay. Okay, three methyl cyclohexanol. Okay, Eric said three methyl cyclohexanol. Is that correct? Of course, this is position number one. We say this is position number one. Keep in mind, we have to number the ring system so that we give the substituents the lowest combination of numbers. And therefore, this is position number three. This is four, 
this is 5, and this is 6. So therefore, uh, the base name for this is cyclo X and all. Okay, so I think uh, Eric is right. So this becomes 3 metal. Cyclo XA no because the metric group is in the three position. Now what is missing in this name? Something is missing in this name. Do we need to add something else to this name? Cis exactly. We need to add the stereochemistry. Okay, there is a stereochemical component to this. Yeah, that is correct, both uh, Eric and uh, Emma. So this becomes cis, three methyl cyclohexanol. Very good. Okay, so we have named this molecule here, which is this here. So now let us go ahead and name this other molecule, this one here. Okay, uh, let me erase what I have on my screen right here to make some room. Okay, the first thing I want to do here, let us draw this molecule out. We have a five-member ring. That is a cyclohexane ring. And then we have attached to that, we have we have this uh, methane carbon here, okay, which is now also attached to an hydroxyl group. Okay, so that is that, an hydroxyl group. And then to this carbon here, we have a methyl group. Okay. Does anybody know what the base name for this molecule will be? Any idea? Keeping in mind that the, the uh, ring system will be a substituent. The, this ring system will be a substituent. Okay, exactly. So the base name will be ethanol. That is correct, Ambria, so ethanol. So we have, because we have here, two carbon atoms, that is why the base name will be ethanol. Okay, Lorraine uh, Bolden, you are welcome, I notice you are joining us. And the hydroxy group is in the one position of ethanol. Okay, so therefore, what will be the name of this? Keeping in mind that the uh, carbon attached to the hydroxy group must be given the lowest possible number. So what will be the name here? We say the base name is ethanol. The base name is ethanol, and then the cyclohexy group, um, I'm sorry, cyclopentry group is a substituent. So what would this be? Anybody want to pick up the mic or just uh, send me a text message? Okay, so that would be, okay, one, because this is position number one. This is position number one, and this is position number two. Okay, so, okay, cyclopenta, one cyclopentanol, one cyclopentyl ethanol, exactly, correct. One cyclopentyl, one cyclopentyl, Okay, and that is this ring right here. It is, it is in the one position, and then we have ethanol. Keep in mind, we did not have to indicate the position of the hydroxy group, because for here, we only have two carbon atoms, and since we already said that this is position number one, by saying one cyclopentyl, that means that the hydroxy group is also attached to that carbon. Okay, if this is clear to you, give me a happy face. So we go to the next one. 
Okay, excellent, excellent. I see a lot of people have joined us. Let us see here. Let us acknowledge these people here. Ambria, uh, Courtney, uh, dear, uh, Eric, of course, uh, Jamie, Marcusin, uh, Julian, Kathleen Stokes, uh, Christina, Lauren Bolden, Melat, Naila, Stephanie Miller, Takia Johnson, Taylor Thompson. Okay, you are all welcome. Okay, let us go to the next one. Okay, uh, Julian, go ahead and read this question for us. Draw the organic compound you would obtain by treatment of the alcohol below with Dez Martin periodinane. <laughs> pi 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 iodinine, okay, pi iodinine, okay, very good. Okay, so now they want you to give the the product of this uh, of the reaction of this compound uh, with uh, the Dez Martin reagent. Okay, so. What is the first thing we need to do? Let us draw this uh, molecule out, okay, uh, using the calculated uh, structure. So we have the CH3, uh, which is this right here, right here, attached to a CH. And then you have that is attached to hydroxy group, and then you have a CH2, and then another CH2, another CH. Uh, that is an isopropyl group, and CH3, and CH3. Now they want us to give the product of the death matching reagent with this molecule here. Okay. Okay, the question I want to ask you guys is... Oh, okay, that is very good. That was the question that, that Julian was asking earlier. Very good. Okay, Julian, that gives the answer to your question. Okay, so Des Martin will react with uh, uh, both a primary alcohol and a secondary alcohol. So in this case, it will convert this secondary alcohol to a ketone. Convert this secondary alcohol to a ketone. So the Des Martin reagent will react with both primary alcohol and secondary alcohol. So what is the product here? The product is this here, the hydroxy group, the secondary uh, alcohol, will be converted to a ketone. So this kind of question here is simply just trying to find out whether you know your reagents and what your reagents do. This is, at this point, this is pure memorization. Okay, so this is the product here. We are going from a secondary alcohol reacting with the death matching reagent to give a ketone. Okay, is that clear to all of you? If it is clear, give me a happy face. Okay, 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 a bunch of happy faces. Okay, very good. Okay, I see some other people have joined us. Okay, now let us go to the next one. Okay, this one here, four. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Ambria, go ahead and read this question for us. Predict the product you would obtain by treatment of the compound below with SOCO2. Okay, okay very good. So 
what they want us to do here is to give the product of the reaction between this secondary alcohol and thionyl chloride, this here. Okay? Folks, if I ask you, what does uh, thionyl chloride do with a secondary or primary alcohol? What does it do? Anybody has an idea? What does it do with a secondary or primary alcohol? Okay, Julian say converts alcohol to alkyl chloride. Excellent. Okay, there is something I want also, very good. I also want you to add something else to that statement. Yes, it does convert an alcohol, primary alcohol or secondary alcohol to alkyl chloride, but something else also happens. What is that something else? Okay, while you are thinking, let me go ahead and write the structure here. So we have this carbon here attached to a methyl group. And then we have an hydrogen which is going away from you. Okay, I need an answer to that question while I'm doing this. Okay, we have the hydroxy group. I'm sorry, the, the hydroxy group is coming at us. Let me do that better. The hydroxy group is coming at us. And the hydrogen is going away from us. Let's do this right. Okay. Now to that you have a CH which is attached to a methyl group and then that CH is attached to a benzene molecule double bond here double bond here and double bond here and then you have bromine is here okay if you take a look at this molecule here okay <coughs> Julian told us it took uh, the tyranic chloride will convert this alcohol to an uh, chloride now th this reaction also takes place with inversion of configuration. Okay, particularly when they show you the stereochemistry here, that means you need to take, uh, take account of the stereochemistry of the molecule. So if you have, in this particular instance here, you have the, uh, the OH is coming at you, the hydrogen going away from you, so therefore, the product you are going to get will be a product in which you are going to get the inversion of configuration. Whatever the configuration at this chirality center is, it will be the opposite. Okay, when, the, when you uh, now introduce the chlorine atom. Okay, so let us see what that is. So that is very important. That, that is what that reagent does. Okay, that means that we now have the chlorine will be here where the hydrogen is. And since we are replacing the hydroxy group, the hydrogen now will be coming at you. This is very important because now we have inversion of configuration. Okay, everything else is the same. Now, no, folks, you notice here the only site of reaction is right here. Okay? The rest of the molecule has nothing to do with this reaction. The rest of this molecule has nothing to do with this reaction. The site of the reaction is right here. Okay? So, therefore, we have a CH. Everything is still the same. 
attached to a metal group, and this is also attached to a benzene molecule right here, right here, and right here. Okay, and that is the product. Whenever you have, in this case, we are reacting this with thionic chloride. Okay, so the message here is any time thionic chloride reacts with a primary or secondary alcohol, it will uh, replace the hydroxy group with a chlorine atom, but the stereochemistry uh, will be inverted. Okay, I have a question here. Will the conversion of configuration always happen when an alcohol is converted to an alkyl chloride? It happens with this reagent. It happens, this is what this reagent will do. This reagent will convert a primary or secondary alcohol to an alkyl chloride with an inverted configuration whenever you use thionic chloride. Okay, Tikia, is that clear to you? Okay, very good. Okay, if that is clear to everybody, give me a happy face. Okay, I see a lot of smiling faces. Excellent, excellent, good. Okay, so now let us go to... Five. Okay, Melat, go ahead and read this question for us. Okay, Melat is not ready. The organic products you would obtain uh, okay. by treatment of the compounds below with the following reagent: CH3, CH2, MgBr, then hydronium ion. Okay, very good. Very good. So, therefore, what they want us to do is to predict the organic product that you will obtain when this molecule here, when this molecule reacts with a Grignard reagent. So, as you can see here, this is your Grignard reagent right here. Then, after you react with the Grignard reagent, you follow that up with hydronium ion. Okay, so let me draw this molecule out for everybody to see using the calculate structure. Take this out of here. So we have our cyclopentyl ring Okay, attached to that is a carbonyl. So we have what kind of molecule? What kind of molecule is this? Is this a ketone, aldehyde, or ester? Ester. Excellent. Excellent. Is this an ester? Okay. So we have an ester, a methyl ester. And they want us to react the methyl ester with ethyl magnesium bromide. So let me change the color of my pen so we see the product very clearly. So we have ethyl magnesium bromide. So I have the green reagent in red. And then, of course, <coughs> after you do this, generally when you have the uh, ethyl magnesium green air reacting with an ester, you will use two moles of this, of the green air. Okay, so that is step one. And then step two, you add hydronium ion. Okay, so therefore, let us see here. What is the product? Okay, somebody say tertiary alcohol with two of the methyl attack plus the cyclopentyl. Excellent. So the two, so those two are, are ethyl coming from green here. That's Emma. Very good. Very good. Okay. So that is what Emma has told us. 
Let us see whether that is correct. So we have this here. We have this here. Okay, I'm going to change my the color of my pen. CH2, CH3, and here we have CH2, CH3, and we know that the hydrogen comes from the hydronium ion. Okay, so therefore, what we have here, we are reacting a linear reagent with an ester and we obtain a tertiary alcohol, okay, in which the two alkyl groups of the tertiary alcohol are coming from the linear reagent. Is that clear to all of you? If it is, give me a happy face. Okay, okay, great. Everybody is happy? Good. Okay, so let us move on. Okay, now they're giving us a nomenclature problem. Let us see here. I do, I do not know all of you who have a mic. Uh, if you have not talked already and you have a mic, pick up the mic and read this question for me. I, only, I have only four people here with mic. Okay. 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 Let's see. Yeah. Okay, okay, go ahead. The IUPAC name for the following compound. Okay, that's right. Jasmine. Very good. Okay, give the IUPAC name for the following compound. So let us start with this here. Does anybody want to give this a try? Let me add, ask you a leading question. How many carbons do you have in this ring? How many? Okay, four. Okay, so that is a leading question. Therefore, how many hydroxy groups do we have in this molecule? On this molecule, two. Okay, so now let us join this together. Okay, it is a ring. Okay, so it is. We say trans. No, that would be because the hydroxy and this hydroxy are on the same side of the ring. So this will be, yes, exactly, cis. So this will be cis cyclo. Okay, somebody has given us the name. Uh, Julian, thank you. Cyclo butane, because we have four carbon in the ring system. Uh, butane in, okay, we need to, okay, oh, I see. You want, okay, let me go this way and then we come the other way. One, three. Die all. Or you could name it this way. You could say cis. One, three. Cyclo. Butane, diol. Okay, so both of those will be acceptable IUPAC names. Okay, let us try this. Okay, let us try this. How many carbons do we have in this ring? That's a leading question. How many carbons in this ring? Six, okay. Okay, now we have the hydroxy group in this position. What is the position of the ethyl group? What is the position of the ethyl group? What is the number we are going to give this ethyl group? Four, okay, great. So we are moving right along. Now, in terms of the stereochemistry, what is the stereochemical relationship between this ethyl group and the hydroxy group. Trans. Okay, so let us put this, uh, the pieces together. So we're now going to say trans.
Now we name the position of the branch with the ethic group. Keep in mind that since we only have one hydroxy group on the ring, we don't need to uh, indicate the position of this hydroxy group. So we simply say this is position one, position two, position three, position four, position five, and position six. Okay, so that becomes trans four ethyl cyclo cyclo exa no okay the hydroxy group is in position number one. Okay, four ethyl cyclohexanol trans. Okay, great. Okay, that's Ambria. Very good. Okay, so let us go. Let we are moving right along. Let us go to let's see here. Nah, ten. Okay, good. Okay, let's see. Uh, Emma, go ahead and read this question for us. Okay, it's Emma is not ready. Okay, Julian, go ahead and read the question for us. Gentile is an antiseptic liquid disinfectant. What is this IUCAT name? Okay, very good. So this should be a very simple one. Uh, does anybody know what the base name for this molecule will be? I will give you a hint. Oh, uh, phenol, excellent, great. Phenol, exactly. The base name is phenol right here. That is the base name right here. Okay, good. It is a phenol. Therefore, let us number this molecule such that we are going to give all of the substituents the lowest possible number, uh, starting with position number one for the hydroxy group. This is one. We say this is two. At this point, it really does not matter whether we go here or here. This is three. This is four, this is five, and position number six. Okay, so what would be the name for this? Okay, Lorraine said four chloro, three five, dimethyl phenol. Okay, if you guys agree with uh, Lorraine, give me a happy face. She says four chloro. Excellent, good. Four chloro. Lorraine, everybody is happy with you. Okay, four chloro three five. Dimethyl. Phenol. Okay, very good. Okay, so let us move on to. See here. Okay. So see, uh, Ambria, go ahead and read this for us. What green urea agent and what carbonyl compound might you start with to prepare the following alcohol? Okay, very good. Okay, what green urea agent are we going to use for this? Uh, the, this is the molecule they have given us. Okay, so let us do some analysis here. If you look at this and they want us to uh, make a primary alcohol, does anybody have an idea uh, what kind of green reagent and what kind of carbon, uh, carbonyl compound uh, 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 could be used for this uh, synthesis? Any suggestions? Okay, let me see if I could give you some help here. Any suggestion? Go ahead. 
thinking that if you think of this part, imagine that this could be coming from the green yard. Okay, supposing that comes from the green yard. Okay, great. Cylinder said, uh, cylinder said, uh, uh, area, great. Okay, what kind of area? So if this comes from the green yard, that means that this must come from the carbonyl compound. So therefore, what kind of area is it? I'll give you a hint. It is the simplest aldehyde. The simplest aldehyde. Okay. Okay. So let us see the scheme for this. Formaldehyde. Great. Okay. So supposing we start with this molecule, therefore. Okay. We want to make the green yard. We start with this molecule. Keep in mind, you make a green yard with uh, a bromo uh, compound, and then you add your magnesium uh, in ether. Uh, if you do not add the ether, that is fine. What the ether is doing is simply just a solvent in this reaction. So you form your green yard. Notice that in this particular uh, question here, they are not asking you to give the reaction mechanism. All they are asking you to do is just to give the scheme. So this becomes your green air reagent. And then, just as you guys have told us, at this point, you now add your aldehyde because you know that you have to make this primary alcohol, okay? Since you know you need to make that primary alcohol, you know you must use formaldehyde. Okay, I see Kia is joining us. So you have this formaldehyde here for step one, and then you follow that up with step two, Hydronium ion, and that gives you the the product. That gives you the product, which is uh, right here. Okay, do you follow that? If you follow that, give me a happy face. The the point to be made here is a green air reagent will react with formaldehyde to give you a primary alcohol. So whenever you see a primary alcohol and they want you to make it using a green yard, you must you should think of formaldehyde. Okay. Okay, let us okay, is there somebody out there that has a mic that has not spoken yet? Pick up the mic and read this question for us. What carbonyl compound would you reduce to produce a bottle of alcohol? Okay, who was that? I did not get that for it was that uh, Lauren Bolden? Lauren, was that you? Oh. Okay. Oh, Christina. Oh, okay, Christina. Okay, very good. Okay, now. Uh, what uh, carbonyl compound would you uh, reduce to produce the following alcohol? So they've already told us the is going to be we are going to do a reduction here. So the clue to that is they are simply telling you you are, you are going to be adding hydrogen. Okay. So therefore, the answer is a ketone. Excellent. Okay. Ambria has given us the answer. So which is to say that here. You are forming a secondary alcohol. That means this hydrogen will be coming from addition of water. And then the hydrogen that is going to be here, this is the hydrogen that will be coming from your metal hydride. OK, if you remember your lithium aluminum hydride and sodium uh, borohydride. So therefore, what is that? In this case, they are simply asking us what kind of 
Okay, what kind of this is this carbon here? Okay, we have this here. What kind of carbonic compound are we going to use? Of course, this is our CH3 here, CH3 here, and CH3 here. So that is our carbonic compound. If you take that and you react that with, it could be sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride. At this point, it does not really matter. Each one of those reagents will convert a ketone to a secondary alcohol. Follow that always a uh, hydronium ion. Okay? So that is the answer to that. That was a very simple one. Okay, let us uh, keep going. Unless there is a question to that. No question. Okay, good. Okay, things are getting slightly more difficult. Okay, let us see here. Uh, Amela, go ahead and read this question for us. What carbonyl compounds might you start with in a Grignard synthesis of the following compounds? 3-phenol, three 3-pentanol. Three okay. So what carbonyl compounds? Well, this is similar to the last one. Okay, so they want us to make, let us draw this. Okay, so what they are also testing here uh, your knowledge of nomenclature to see whether you know uh, your nomenclature. Okay, so you have 3 phenyl, 3 pentanol. Okay, so let us see what we have 3 pentanol, 3 phenyl, 3 pentanol. So we have this here. We have this 3 pentanol, this here, meaning that we have 5 carbon in the chain. So that is 3 pentanol, then they say 3 phenyl. Okay, folks, there are several answers to this, so let us see. What would be your choices? What carbonyl compound can you use? Okay, what would be your choices? Okay, let us see here. What carbonyl compound can you use? Okay, ester and then, okay, that is good. The reason for that is because you have two alkyl groups here, so this could come from there. Okay, very good. So the ester part will be this here. That means your benzene must be the extra part of the molecule. Okay, that was uh, Ambria. Okay, very good. No, I'm sorry, that was uh, Emma. Okay, good. So now we have this here. And you could use a methyl ester because this methoxy group is going to disappear anyway. And then you have ethyl, then you use ethyl magnesium bromide as your linear reagent. So that is step one, and then step two. Okay. Does anybody know the another way we can do this? In this case, you use two moles of this. Okay, any other way we can do this? Okay, we have started with an ester. Any other suggestion? A ketone. Excellent. You could start with a ketone. Of course, this could be the ketone part right here. Okay, actually there are several choices here. So we could start with this ketone. You could start with this ketone. Okay, if we start with this, with that ketone, and then we react that with a greener reagent, we also get the same product. 
So now we are also going to use ethyl magnesium bromide as a linear reagent. And then we follow that up with adronium ion. Okay, do you see that? If you see that, give me a smiling face. Okay, now what other uh, choice do we have here? Is there any other possibility? Any other possibility? I see that uh, there has also joined us. Any other possibility? Okay, there is one more possibility that you can think of. Supposing, give you a hint, supposing this part, this part is your ketone. Supposing that part is your ketone, and then the, the benzene ring is your greenyard. That is possible also. Okay, so let us try that. Okay, so we have we have the <coughs> this part here, our ketone. We make that the ketone is if cis carbon ketone. And then we now add step one, our Grignard reagent using phenyl magnesium bromide as a Grignard reagent. And then we follow that up with hydronium ion. Okay. Okay, do you see that? If you do, give me a happy face without the ring. Yes. Okay, that was uh, Stephanie saying that. Okay, you see that? Okay, great, great. Okay, so we are moving right along. Okay, we see I have a little bit more time to go. Okay, let us see here. C21. Oh no, okay. No, not that. I'm sorry about that. I don't want you to do that. Uh, that was the problem we just did was uh, for that 11. Okay. Okay. Okay, we just did that. Okay, that's the one we just did. Okay. Now let us see here. Let's do what here, 15. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll, okay, Jasmine, go ahead and read this question for us. What organic product would you obtain from reaction of 2-methyl-1-propanol with CrO3, H2O, and H2SO4? Okay, very good. Okay, so you have what organic product would you obtain from the reaction of this molecule here with a chromic acid, uh, this, this molecule right here. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do, we have to write the structure of that molecule. So you see, uh, for the most, uh, most part, most of these questions, the first thing they do is to test your knowledge of nomenclature. Okay, so we have 2-methyl-1-propanol. So it is a propanol. It is a 3-carbon molecule. It's a 2-methyl. So I have a methyl group in the 2 position. And then we have the propanol 1 the hydroxy group in one position. Okay. Now they say give the product. So this is a very simple case of knowing your reagent. So what would be the answer to this? Chromium, 
trioxide in the presence of sulfuric acid, aqueous sulfuric acid. Okay, what will be the answer to this? What is the product? Is the product going to be a ketone, an aldehyde? Okay, good. Sine, dear Sine, you are welcome. Okay, Sine said carboxylic acid. That is good. Make a carboxylic acid, Robert. Okay, good. Okay, so therefore, what that is telling us is that this carbon here becomes your carboxy group because this reagent here will oxidize a primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid. The same reagent will also oxidize a secondary alcohol to a ketone. Okay? So in this case we have we have the isopropyl group who at who uh, attached will be attached to a carboxyl group and that is the product. Okay, so no question. So let us go to the to the next one. Okay. Let's see who else has uh, whose mic is working. Julian, go ahead and read this question for us. For if your mic is working, uh, just send me a text message so I know your mic is working. Uh, Julian, so the are are available reagents. Calls. Select the ones you use to convert two phenylethanol to each of the following products. Okay, very good. Okay, so now they want us uh, to the convert uh, the molecules here. Yeah. Turn your mic off. Convert this molecule here to each one of these, this and this. Okay, okay. I see. Let me see the people whose minds are working. Uh, Lorraine, uh, Robert. Okay, very good. Let me write the name down. Robert, Lorraine, Christine, Christina. Okay. Okay, Kier, okay, very good. A lot of you have working mics, so I could call on you. Okay, very good. Okay, so now let us see what, what are we going to do with this. So we have two phenyl ethanol, and they want us to make one phenyl ethanol. Okay, so let us see what that is. Of course, the first thing we need to do here is to write the structures of this starting material and the product, okay? Two phenyl ethanol. Okay, so we have ethanol. This is, this is ethanol. Okay, since they tell us two phenyl ethanol, so what we need to do, this has to be position number one, Therefore, this is position number two, so I take one hydrogen out, and your phenyl is now here. That is two phenyl, two phenyl ethanol. Okay, and that is this here. They want us to start with that and go to one phenyl ethanol. Okay, that's interesting. They want us to go to another ethanol. So therefore, it, this time it is one phenyl. So we have ethanol. Since they want us to make the one phenyl, okay, that's the one position. Oh, it is here. That means the phenyl is right here. So they are also testing our knowledge of nomenclature. Okay. So therefore, and these are the reagents they have given us to use. Okay, without taking a look at this reagent, let us see if we can do this. 
Okay, anybody has an idea how to do this? What we want to do here is almost like we are rearranging this molecule because if you look at the problem here, uh, we are not making a new carbon-carbon bond, simply just rearranging the molecule, going from a primary alcohol to a secondary alcohol. Okay, anybody has an idea? Okay, I, I will give you a hint. You need to make an alkene. You need to make an alkene. There is no... Okay, somebody saying, okay, you got the idea. That is correct. There is no uh, potassium hydroxide. But you have phosphorus oxychloride. You have phosphorus oxychloride. Use phosphorus oxychloride, very good reagent uh, to transform an, an alcohol to an alkene. Okay, so you do that. So now we form a carbon carbon double bond. Okay, so phosphorus oxychloride, this reagent will do that. And I believe that is this one here. Okay. And then, once you do that, at this point, you want to uh, do a Makonikov addition of water because now you want to go from here to here. If you look at this, you are adding uh, the elements of water. That means you must add hydrogen to this carbon here and the hydroxy group to this carbon. So, therefore, this is a what type of addition is this? Anybody has an idea? Is this going to be a Makonikov addition or anti? Is it anti Makonikov or Makonikov addition? Because hydrogen goes here, hydroxy goes here. Okay, that this is a Makonikov addition. Keep in mind for your Makonikov addition, the hydrogen goes to the carbon that has the more hydrogen. Keep that in mind. For Makonikov addition, the hydrogen goes to the carbon that has the more hydrogen or the most hydrogen, if you want to be uh, a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I guess the more hydrogen will be better. The more hydrogen. Okay, so in this case, this carbon has the uh, more hydrogen than this carbon here, so this hydrogen, the hydrogen goes here. So to do that, a reagent that you need to do that is mercury, if you remember what we did in uh, last semester, mercury acetate followed by sodium borohydride. Okay, this reagent here will add water across a carbon-carbon double bond in a Makonikov fashion. Okay? Okay, very good. Okay, now let us see. Now they want us to do this one here. So I am going to erase this. Okay, we have to start with the same material. So I will erase this. And then... Oh, by the way, in that other problem, the, I did not point that out to you. Uh, the mercury, yeah, the other reagent is this one here. Okay. Okay, now they want us to uh, convert this molecule here to this molecule. So what is this here? One bromo, two phenyl, ethane. Okay, what is that? So that is one bromo, two phenyl, ethane. So this is ethane. So let us see. It's a very simple molecule. That is ethane. They now say one bromo. Okay, so we take off one hydrogen. Let us say this is position number one. Okay, so the bromine is here. And then they also say two phenyl. So we take, that means this is position number two. 
remove one of the hydrogens and therefore we have the phenyl group. The phenyl is in position number two. Okay. Okay, folks, what reagent do we need to use to go from a primary alcohol to an alkyl bromide? Okay. No, you don't use uh, phosphorus or cyclohydride. No, you do not use all phosphorus or cyclohydride. In this case, you, you, your second answer is correct. In this case, you use phosphorus tribromide. The phosphorus tribromide will convert a primary alcohol or a secondary alcohol to an alkyl bromide. And this reaction also goes with inversion of configuration. But in this particular instance, uh, this carbon here uh, is not a is not the chirality center, so we do not need to worry about stereochemistry here. Okay, so what do we have? We use phosphorus tribromide, and that takes you from the primary alcohol or secondary alcohol to an active bromide. In this case, we have a primary alcohol, and so we get a primary active bromide. Okay? Let's see, we are moving right along. See. Okay. Uh, Robert, go ahead and read this question for us. From the table of available reagents, select the ones who you would use to convert 1 phenylethanol to M bromobenzoic acid. Okay, very good. Okay, very, very good. Okay, so now what do we have? We want to go from this molecule here to this molecule. Okay, folks, you notice that gradually we are going from uh, memorization to uh, some thinking at this point. We, the, uh, the complexity of the, of the questions are, uh, uh, the questions are getting more complex. Okay, one phenyl ethanol. So we have one phenyl ethanol. So the phenyl group is in the one position of ethanol. That is the molecule that we just made. And they want us to make this here. M bromobenzoic acid. That's a very good one. This will bring us back to what we did in chapter 15, benzoic acid. That is benzoic acid. Now we have M bromo. Okay, folks, how do we do this? How do we do this? Uh, I'll give you a little analysis here. You have the carboxy group. It's here. And you also have the, the bromine here. Okay, and you are starting with this molecule here. Your carbon is already attached to here. Okay, and the problem here is this molecule here, this, this group here, is an auto para director. Okay, because it is an sp3 hybridized carbon, it is an auto para director. So that means you cannot do uh, bromination directly on this molecule. So what do we do? What is the first thing you do? Anybody has an idea? Okay, so supposing we try this. Supposing we try this. Change my pen. We have, remember potassium permanganate in acid or water. That will cleave 
This, that will oxidize this carbon here to carboxylic acid. As long as, keep in mind, as long as you have a carbon is attached to benzene, and that carbon also is attached to an hydrogen, that carbon will be oxidized, could be oxidized to a carboxy group. So keep that in mind. That was, we did that in chapter 16. So we get this molecule here. Okay, I think Patrick is joining us. You are welcome. So we get this molecule here. Okay, so at this point, then what do we do at this point? Uh, what do we do to now get to this product? What reagent do we need to get to that product? Okay, bromine. Okay, great. We now use bromination, bromine in iron with iron 3 bromide. Okay, do we have all these reagents here? Yes. We have the potassium permanganate. And then we have the bromine. Where is the bromine? Yes. So these are all here. Okay, very good. Okay, let us move on. What time do we have? Let's spend 10 more minutes and then we will leave. Here. Okay. Okay, another interesting uh, problem here. Okay, let us do this. See, Lorraine, go ahead and read this question for us. Okay, I think Lorraine is not ready. Okay, Akia, go ahead and read this question for us. From the table, from the table of available reagents, select the ones you would use to convert three pentanol to three pentanol and three pentanol to two ethyl one butanol. Okay, Akia, go ahead and read this question for us. Very good. Okay, so now what they want us to do? The first thing, of course testing our knowledge of nomenclature. So let us write this these structures of these molecules here. They want us to go from 3-pentanol three 3-pentanol three to 2-pentanol, or 3-pentanol, three, three okay, which is this here. Okay, so this should be a very simple one. So what reagent do we need here? Uh, there is a variety of reagents that we can use. Going from a secondary alcohol to a ketone. We could use, okay, we say D, yes, D will work, Chrom chromium uh, nitride in sulfuric acid, that will work. Okay, that will work. Okay, let us say, we, let's pick that one, chromium anhydride with sulfuric acid. Okay, what other reagent will work? What other reagent will work? Okay, let's say that will work. Very good. What other reagent? Okay, anybody has an idea that is not listed here okay. that would work? Okay. Okay, Kia, go ahead. No, not KOH. No. Uh, how about, uh, okay, this, okay. Death Martin. Death Martin will work. Death Martin will work. Death Martin will also transform a secondary alcohol to a ketone. Okay, there is another reagent that will work. PCC. Okay. PCC will also work. PCC. Okay, so these three reagents, PCC. So these three reagents will work. 
uh, chromium tri uh, trioxide in sulfuric acid, desmatin reagent, and PCC. All of these will transform a secondary alcohol to a ketone. Okay, so we've done that. Now let us do the next one. They also want us to take the same starting material and then form 2 ethyl one butanol. Okay, let us see what that looks like. 2 ethyl one butanol. Let's see here. 2 ethyl one butanol. So that the base name is 4 carbon atom. 2 ethyl, so that means the ethyl group is in the 2 position. And then we have CH2. Okay, that's a very good one. Okay, anybody has an idea how to do this? Let us do a little bit of analysis here. Uh, this is a little, bit, a little bit more complex than some of the problems that we have been dealing with. Okay, what we have here, we're starting with a molecule that has only five carbon atoms. And if you take a very close look at this, you are ending with a molecule with six carbon atoms. That means we need to make a new carbon-carbon bond, okay? And based on the chemistry we have been doing so far, how would you make a new carbon-carbon bond? And how are you going to... Greenyard, okay, great. We are saying Greenyard, that is correct. Now, where would the Greenyard come from? If you take a look at this, okay? Okay, I will say, okay, I'm looking at this here. Supposing the Greenyard is coming from here. Okay, therefore, what kind of carbonyl compound am I going to use here? Okay, given the fact that we are starting with this molecule, the reason why I said that must be the green yet, because I am starting with this molecule. Okay, it's an aldehyde. What kind of aldehyde? This has to be a special type of aldehyde. Okay, because we have only this here. Formaldehyde, okay, very good. So now we have established that we need a green yard with formaldehyde. So that is a good step forward. Now the next question is, how do we make our green yard? We're starting with an alcohol. How do we make the green yard? Okay, how do we make the green yard? We're starting with this alcohol here. Okay, so how do you make the green yard? Okay, good, good. I must say we first thing we need to do is to transform this alcohol to an alkyl bromide using phosphorus tribromide. So therefore we do this. P B R three and that will take that molecule and we get so this is a case in which you have to look very care uh, carefully at your product and see exactly what you need to do that's the bromide and then you have this here and then once you do that, take this out of the way for one minute. Let me write a better bromide here, yeah? or bromine. So we have. Okay, now you now take your green yard. You make your green yard, right? Okay, once you make your green yard.
Okay, then after that, then you take this to convert to this molecule here. You take your formaldehyde, step one. And step two. Okay, and that is how you then make that molecule, which is this molecule here. Okay, so this part of the molecule here, this part of the molecule is coming from your formaldehyde, okay? Okay, if you, uh, if you follow that, give me a happy face. Okay, you follow that, give me a happy face. Let's see, okay, happy faces. Okay, very good. Okay, now before we leave, because we are getting close to, I want us to do, okay, I want us to do this problem. Okay, let's see, uh, okay, have, okay, Jasmine, go ahead and read this question for us. Acid catalyzed dehydration of T2 dimethyl cyclohexanol yields in part. Isopropyl, uh, dye, dye, methane, okay. <laughs> okay. cyclopentane. Okay. So what is the structural form of the two carbocation ion intermediate initiation? Okay, very good. Okay, very good. Okay, that is isopropyl, uh, propolidine, cyclopentane, isopropolidine, cyclopentane. Okay. This is a very good one. This is one of the questions of the day. Okay, so let me, let me take this out. What they want you to do, they want us to transform, show how this molecule here, 2,2-dimethylcyclohexanol, will give this product here. But indirectly, they are asking us, what are the carbocations that are used to actually get to this product. So in other words, they are telling you that the mechanism of this reaction involves the formation of a carbocation. That is what they are telling you here by telling you to give the carbocation intermediate. Actually, they said the two of them. Okay, so let us start. The first thing we need to do here, to, we need to know the structure of this molecule. That is cyclohexanol. That is the base name. So we have cyclohexanol. This is a mechanism problem. I know many of you always have problem with mechanism. Okay, so this is here. Of course, you have this here, hydrogen here. They also tell us it is 2, 2 dimethyl, so we have a methyl group here, another methyl group here, both of them in the 2 position. So now they say acid catalyzed in the presence of acid, some kind of acid. Okay, some kind of acid. Let us just use hydronium ion. They're telling you, after this molecule is treated with this acid here, you obtain this product. And now they want you to give the two carbocation intermediate that is used to actually uh, go from here to here. So directly, they are already telling you that this reaction involves the formation of a carbocation. Okay, so I need your help here. I need your help here. So, uh, if we have to do this, okay, if we have to do this, anybody has an idea how to do this? What do we start with? 
to start the mechanism. Anybody has an idea? You have an alcohol, you have an acid. What is the first thing that happens? Protonation. Ex excellent, excellent. So we the, will be double bonded to. No, the, the, the first thing that is going to happen is protonation. Okay, so this non bonding pair of electron on oxygen, okay, keep in mind, are to act as a base. Okay, so those two pair, those pair of electrons come here, pick up a proton from here, and then you are going to get, so you need to know this, because whenever you have an alcohol and you have acid, the chances are there will be protonation. We have done this several times already. Okay, so you need to keep that in mind. Okay, so you have protonation. This is still here. So we, this is now positively charged. This hydrogen is still here. I want you to follow this very, very closely. And this, carb this metal is still here. This here is still here. So what I want to do now, OK? The, the next, OK, so what is the next thing that will happen? What is, what is the next thing that will happen? These two electrons here, let me write them better. What are leaves? OK, great. What I will leave, just a minute, I will put that right back there. So now what I will leave, OK, because what I, oh, OK. Okay, so what I will leave to my arrow, and then you obtain this carbocation. Now this is where it gets very interesting. Now you get this carbocation. Okay, so now you form a carbocation that is, of course, this hydrogen is still here. That is a secondary carbocation. The water is here somewhere. Okay? You now form a secondary carbocation. Now, if you recall what we told you several times, that any time you go through the formation of a carbocation, if the carbocation uh, can rearrange to form a more stable carbocation, it will do that. So at this point, we have answered one question they want us to answer here. Hmm. My pen is not responding to this. Let's see here what is going on here. OK. They say give the two carbocations, okay? So now at this point we have given one of the carbocations right here. Now notice what is also happening here. What you are going from a six carbon uh, molecule to a five carbon molecule. So what that is telling you is that there is going to be some rearrangement that will reduce the six carbon molecule to a five carbon molecule. So that is your clue right there, OK? So if that is going to happen, I want you to follow this very, very carefully. I'm going to uh, put some color on this to code this. This, I'll put this color on this carbon here. Put this color on this carbon right here. OK, follow this very closely now. And this yellow here, 
on this carbon. Okay? Of course, you see the methyl group and this methyl group. Now, what is going to happen here, this molecule is going to rearrange to form a more stable carbocation. One of these alkyl groups could break. Keep in mind, this is nothing but an alkyl group. This will break. The bond between this carbon and this carbon will break and form a bond with this carbocation carbon. Okay, now let us see what we are going to get. Follow this very, very closely. Okay, so now I have, now at this point, I will form a five-member ring. Now we have formed a five-member ring. Now... This carbon here now is this carbon. Okay, follow that now. And this carbon here is this carbon. Okay, so that means I see I have my hydrogen attached to that carbon right here. And of course, that also means, since we break this here, that also means this bond here with this two methyl group are still here. Okay, so those two methyl group are there. You have CH3 and CH3. At this point, this carbon now becomes a carbocation. So what have we done? We've gone from a secondary carbocation a secondary carbocation to a tertiary carbocation. To a tertiary carbocation. If you see that, give me a happy face. If you see that, give me a happy face. Okay. So that is what we have done now. Okay? Okay? So now that we've done that, keep in mind carbocations are very, very reactive species. They will rearrange either by, uh, by uh, hydride shift, we've seen that before, either hydride shift, methyl shift, or in this case, alkyl, alkyl shift, in order to form a more stable carbocation. Okay, and that is what we have here. So this alkyl group, this here, shifted away from this carbon to form to join to this carbocation carbon, and in so doing, this carbon here, this carbon here. Let me now use my color code, which is now this carbon becomes a tertiary carbocation. So at this point, this molecule is set up to now lose hydrogen or a proton to get to here. So what is going to now happen? You're now going to get this water here will now act as a base. That water will now act as a base. Let me have the water in a different color so we can see it better. This green. The water now comes in. Okay, act as a base to pull this hydrogen. Okay, and in so doing, this bond here comes here to form the double bond that you see here. Okay, so you end up with hydronium ion. So we started with this hydronium ion, and we ended up with the hydronium ion. So what we've done here, the hydronium ion was used as a catalyst to get this reaction to go. And that is why they told you it is a catalyst, okay? Okay, now if you see this, give me a happy face. Okay, now if you don't see this, when you see me tomorrow, or you, uh, you could ask me more about this, or you could come to the office to ask me about this tomorrow. But this 
kind of uh, mechanism you should expect to get uh, in many uh, exams or quizzes that you will be taking. Okay, before we leave, let me, there is one more problem I want us to do. 29. Okay, now this is the second problem of the day. Okay, let's see. Uh, if there is somebody that has not talked and uh, the mic is working, uh, just pick up the, your mic and read this question for us. Compound A, C, 6, H14, O undergoes reaction with dilute H2SO4 at 25 degrees Celsius to give a mixture of two alkenes. C6H12, the major alkene product B gives two products after ozone treatment followed by reduction with zinc and acetic acid, one of which is a methyl ketone. Draw the structure of compound A. Okay, excellent. That's, uh, that's it here. Okay. okay, very good. Now, compound A. Also, you should expect to get this kind of problem. Compound A. C6H14. C six H fourteen with oxygen. Okay. Can anybody tell me what is the index of hydrogen deficiency for this molecule? Or some people call that uh, the degree of unsaturation. No, we are not going to do twenty one today. Okay, so let us finish this 29. Uh, those of you who want to do 21 should see me in the office tomorrow. Okay, now, if you take a look at this molecule here, what is the, the uh, index of hydrogen deficiency? IHD. Zero. Excellent, excellent. Everybody got that right. So that means, what does that mean? That means that this molecule has no double bond or triple bond, or that this molecule only has only single bonds. And since they told us it also has oxygen, the chances are this molecule is an alcohol. Of course, they also told us that it reacts with dilute sulfuric acid. And then they also tell us it gives two alkenes. So they've already told you that this molecule contains is an alcohol. So you have, let us do, do the reaction, C6, H14, oxygen, with dilute acid. Okay, they say you get two compounds. Okay, C6, H12, this is an alkene, and this, the alkene that you get, you get two isomers. They also tell us that one of the isomers, which is the major isomer, they call B. Let us say this is, let us assume this is the B, okay? So they have B and A. They say B is the major uh, uh, alkene product. He said B reacts with ozone followed by zinc to give oh, um, yeah, zinc in acetic acid uh, to give a methyl ketone. Okay, this is what is giving the problem away, to give a methyl ketone. Okay, so on this side of the molecule, we don't know what this is. So let us simply say R. We know that it is a methyl ketone. Then they say draw the structure of compound A. This is compound A. Okay? Draw the com structure of compound A. Does anybody have, have an idea what this could be? I will give you a hint. You only have six carbon atoms in this molecule. This is the kind of question where you really have to think. This is where we extend your uh, crit uh, critical thinking skills. 
This molecule has only six carbon atoms. And then after the ozonolysis, you get alkene. You know that uh, ozonolysis will kill, uh, give an alkene to give you. In this case, let us say that we have this alkene. We have something here. Let's say this prime, another double prime, and we have R here. Okay, so in essence, this is compound B right here. And compound B is reacting with our ozone followed by zinc to give us this compound and something else. So that means we are cleaving this. Okay, we are cleaving that. So what are the choices? That, you know, it, what are the choices? You only have six carbon atoms. Okay, so let us take all of this out of the way. You keep in mind the key here. You only have six carbon atoms, and we are we are we are telling you that this must be compound B. So let us assume. Let us assume that. Okay. Let us assume that we okay we have this. Supposing we assume that this is a metric group. Let's see whether that works. Okay. Supposing we assume that this R is a, is a metric group. Okay. So let us see. Would that work? So you have this. If R is a metric group, so that means that you must also have this product. If that is the case, now you only have three more carbons to go. Now follow me very closely. Now you only have three more carbons to go. Now you know that those three more carbons to go cannot give you a compound of this nature because you are cleaving this. So what we, what we are saying here, R double, R double prime and R prime cannot be metal group because if they are metal group, then they will be the same as this. But those two compounds are different. So therefore, what are the choices? Let us say, let us assume that this R here, let us say this is hydrogen, right? By necessity, what must this be? By necessity, this must be CH2, CH3, OK? Let us say that is correct. So it is, is it possible we have this here? Okay, that is on the I'm making one assumption here that this R is a metric group. In that case, it must be this product. That one of this product must be this. Uh, this, this R must be this product here. If that is the case. Then I am also making an assumption that this R prime equals to this hydrogen here, and this double prime equals to this. If that is the case, let us see, would that work? Let's put those together. If it doesn't work, then you go back to plan B. OK? So let me take my eraser. OK, so because all we want to do is to find out what compound A is. So if that is the case, I then say, I have CH3, CH2, CH3, and then I have this, I have this. I have. There are several possibilities here, so you, you guys should be thinking about those. So I am saying the major alkene product, that is what, according to my assumption right now. So if that is the case, then we are, what is the alcohol? OK? Because this must come from here. OK? Therefore, what am I saying? The alcohol could be, the alcohol could be CH3. It's not to say that this is correct, but these are some of the things that you have to think of. Okay, so if we add, let us imagine that we have the alcohol here. 
So if hydrogen is here, and we have our alcohol here, and this hydrogen is still here, and therefore this is still here, Okay, let us look at this. Is this a possible molecule for compound A? If compound, this compound A, therefore, if we say this is compound A, there are some other possibilities, so you need to think about this. Uh, you could devise your own possibility as long as it is consistent with compound A. If this is compound A, and then you do your dehydration, okay, you do dehydration, the hydration could give us two products. If we, give, if we dehydrate on this carbon here, you will get this. That would be the major product. Okay? But if we dehydrate on this carbon here, you get the minor product. But all they're giving us, they say this is the major, if this is the major product, and then you do your ozonolysis on this, ozonolysis could Conceive, conceive, uh, could uh, possibly give us the product that they said that we have, which is a methyl ketone. In this case, it could be this acetone. And then the other product will have to be this here. Okay? Do you guys see that? But there are some other possibilities. So what I want you to do, when you go home, try to see if you can come out with other possibilities. Okay? As long as it is your, your, your answers are consistent with the data that you are giving. Okay, so let me recap before we go. Uh, this is messy here. We start off with, uh, take this, okay. okay, let me take this out. Okay, now, so what they say is, According to what we are we have been told, that this compound A will react with sulfuric acid. Okay, according to my own analysis here, I say okay, this compound A gives compound B. So this is what I am calling compound B. And then I say that compound B. Then I am saying that compound B will react with uh, ozone. Step one, followed by zinc in acetic acid. To give this here, they say we get a methyl ketone. This is a methyl ketone plus another compound because it is cleaving here, that is what ozone will do, and that other compound is this here. Okay, which is now to say that this compound A is there for this compound here. One possibility it could be this compound here. Okay. Now, is it possible that compound A could also be one in which the hydroxy group is on this carbon? Think about that. Is that possible? Do you want us to go through that possibility? If you do, give me a happy face. Is it possible that compound the hydroxy group could be here? Okay, okay, so, okay. So I think you guys understand what is going on here. So anyway, I don't see any happy faces here. So that means uh, everybody is happy with what we have. 
But I really do want you to, when you go go home, see if you can also work this out. There are some other possibilities. So is there any question before we leave? Any question before we, no question. Okay. Okay, if there are no questions, I will say enjoy the rest of your evening. Well, it's almost, uh, it's well over 90 minutes. Okay, I know you guys are ready to uh, to go and rest for the for the day. Okay, so enjoy the rest of your evening, and I will see you tomorrow. What are your office hours? Okay, you can come in tomorrow. I will be in the office uh, any time after 10 o'clock. Okay? Very good. So we'll see you tomorrow.